Asante. Nadhania Waitito na wanasiasa wenzake wamesikia risashi ya Sonko. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta, uh, Cabinet colleagues present, the chairperson of the ASK Kenya, and your team, the former president, vice president of the Republic of Kenya, Karonzo Musioka, cabinet colleagues present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure and honor that I take this opportunity to welcome you to this year's Nairobi International Trade Fair, which is the largest trade fair in the Eastern African region. I wish to thank you most sincerely, Your Excellency, on behalf of the Agricultural Society of Kenya and the farming community for accepting our invitation to come and preside over this important occasion. Your Excellency, Agriculture continues to play a key role in Kenya's economy and is fundamental to the realization of the Big Four Agenda, which includes 100% food and nutrition security and raw materials for agro-industrial production in addition to employment generation. To ensure achievement of 100% food and nutrition security, I want to assure you, sir, that my ministry has designed several interventions towards achieving this course and implementing your directives, including providing quality and certified potato, maize, avocado, cashew nuts, honda, coconut seeds, tea, coffee, macadamia, and others, reducing post-harvest losses, Establishing fish landing sites and providing pickerings, establishing feed rods and en enhancing the leash of animal vaccines and strengthening agriculture research. I take this opportunity to thank the leadership of counties for cooperation that they have continued to give my ministry in driving these initiatives. Your Excellency, in the next few weeks, my ministry will continue sharing other strategies with all the stakeholders so that they too can play their role in delivering the big four agenda and the longer term agriculture sector transformation and growth strategy. Your Excellency, sir, with those few remarks, it is now my humble duty and privilege to invite you to officially open the 2018 Nairobi International Trade Fair. Welcome, Your Excellency. Ah, thank you, Bissi. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join you today during this occasion of the 2018 Nairobi International Trade Fair. And let me begin by commending the Agricultural Society of Kenya for organizing, from what we have seen today, a world-class trade fair. Pongez. Indeed, it is worth applauding ASK. It is a fact that for 117 years of your experience and existence, you have served the Kenyan farmer with complete dedication. We are truly deeply grateful for that service. Ladies and gentlemen, in the show, the society extends that service to the Kenyan people and their friends and partners, bringing to our attention the very latest innovations in agriculture and teaching us to come even closer to excellence. This year's theme, innovation and technology in agriculture and trade is both important as well as timely. Innovation and technology in agriculture and trade are at the cornerstone of my administration's commitment to job creation through manufacturing and ensuring food security for all Kenyans through enhancement in agriculture, two pillars of our Big Four agenda. 
We as a country should be proud to note that we are the undisputed regional hub of innovation, especially with regard to digital technologies. Nearly 25% of all of Africa's agricultural technology startups are initiated and hosted here in Kenya. Furthermore, with a mobile penetration of nearly 90% and with 70% of our population connected to financial services, predominantly through mobile money platforms, we are well positioned to lead the continent in technological enhancement and innovation in the fields of agriculture and trade. I therefore challenge the private sector to step up groundbreaking innovations such as new forms of capital and insurance for farmers, new ways of getting farmers the information they need, and new and affordable technology, whether in seeds or other outputs, that directly contribute to improved farm production. For my part, we are clear on what we need to do as a government. We have selected a mix of policies that meet Kenya's farmers' needs both now and in the long term. First, we are preparing the e-registration of all farmers in order to create an agricultural, digital, and analytics tool on a national scale. Second, as we focus on agriculture, we are also conscious of the threat of climate change and unpredictability of weather conditions and its likely adverse impact on agricultural production. To cut the cost of climate variation, the coverage of the agricultural and livestock insurance programs that we adopted a few years ago will be widened. To make the most of our fisheries and blue economy, we have prepared a comprehensive plan and we look forward to raise production while preventing losses to illegal foreign fishing off our own coast. Further, we will continue to support and encourage more private sector investment, especially in post-harvest handling and market distribution infrastructure, agricultural processing, and value addition. To reduce the cost of food, my administration will continue to endeavor to provide affordable energy and avail incentives for post-harvest technologies to reduce crop post-harvest losses from 20% currently to 10% by 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, my administration has finalized plans to increase significantly the production and consumption of blended maize flour with the aim of supporting nutritional intakes of food. This will see increased production and consumption of drought-tolerant crops like sorghum, millet, and cassava, and in turn this will create a market for farmers of these staple crops, especially in those parts of our country that receive less rainfall. This financial year, my administration has allocated Kenya shillings 57 billion to the Ministry of Agriculture for these and other key interventions. But it is no good talking about these inputs. What Kenyans want to see is results. They want lower food prices and higher incomes from the efforts that they have put on their land. We believe that the money allocated to the ministry will meet these needs, not least because the projects that have been carefully selected, but because the answer to the real needs of our farmers and herders. One example, if I may, is the water harvesting for smallholder irrigation development 
which we are funding. This will provide an estimated 100,000 households water pans with a total capacity of 150 million cubic meters to irrigate approximately 125,000 acres in various counties by 2022. That is the kind of targeted project that makes a change in the lives of Kenyans. We can expect more of these in the year to come. We as a government need to also think carefully about the priority sectors in which we should spend our public money. I can say without doubt, few areas of public spending are more important than agriculture. To help us spend money wisely and to put, that ve and to put the very latest knowledge and inf information at the disposal of the Kenyan farmer, my administration has established the State Department of Agricultural Research in the Ministry of Agriculture with an allocation of 5 billion shillings this year, and I expect their findings to spur our production. We will also continue to support our farmers by reducing costs of production through fertilizer subsidy program. And to this end, this year, Kenya shillings 4 billion has been allocated to this program. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, tea, horticulture, and coffee remain our top export earners. But going forward, we need to diversify our offering and to broaden our export basket through value and addition and in production of emerging high-value agricultural commodities. In this context, my administration has put in place measures aimed at cutting value chain inefficiencies by at least 50%. In consequence, we expect to see an annual increase in production of green tea from 1 million metric tons to 1.6 million tons, coffee from 40,000 to 100,000 metric tons, cotton from 29,000 bales to 200,000 bales, and pyrethrum production from 300 metric tons to 3,000 metric tons by 2022. Horticulture is the fastest growing agricultural industry in Kenya, with an average annual growth rate of between 15 to 20 percent. This industry, horticulture, contributes 33% of the total gross agricultural output, and annually it earns for our country Kenya shillings 101 billion in foreign exchange. In terms of employment, it accounts for more than 6 million Kenyans employed directly and indirectly. Indeed, horticulture has the potential to spur further growth of our national income, especially in view of the reducing land sizes. Over the coming years, special emphasis will be given to improving the production of avocado, mango, cashew nuts that both have high demand in domestic and global markets. These measures, including provision of subsidized high-quality seedlings and training of our farmers to empower them with good agricultural practices. To this end, over 2 million assorted quality seedlings will be provided to the farmers in various production zones. This will see the cumulative area, for example, under avocado and mango production increased by 31% from the current 112,107 acres to 146,427 acres. We expect the aggregate production for the two crops to increase by 42% from the current 1.2 million metric tons 
to 1.7 million metric tons. In consequence, gross domestic product will gain additionally some Kenya shillings 70 billion and some 128,000 more jobs will be created from just these two crops. As part of the Big Four agenda, my administration is also focusing on manufacturing. We are targeting contribution by manufacturing to our GDP to increase from the single digit level currently to 15% by 2022, and hence help create more than 800,000 jobs. Our emphasis is on textiles, apparels, leather products, and agro-processing. And to this end, my administration has made allocations for the development of these industries in the sector, including 400 million shillings for Kenani Leather Industrial Park in Nathi River, 400 million shillings for the Textile Development Export Promotion Zone, our EPZ hub, Kenya shillings 1.4 bit 3 billion for the modernization of river tax and 200 million for the modernization of the new KCC. The livestock subsector contributes significantly to Kenya's economy by providing employment, food security, and raw material for agro industries. We will facilitate milk marketing and reduce post-harvest losses. And in this regard, both levels of government have agreed to partner with other stakeholders to provide dairy farmers with more milk coolers. The measures are expected to increase annual production of processed milk from 630 million to 1 billion liters annual production to 1 billion liters and annual production of hides and skins from 59.6 million to 72 million square feet, and our annual meat production from 700,000 metric tons to 990,000 metric tons. With respect to fish production annually, Kenya produces 135,000 metric tons against an annual consumption of 450,000 metric tons, leading to an annual fish supply deficit of 314,000 metric tons. As a government, we appreciate the immense potential in the fisheries and blue economy subsector. To consolidate the gains made so far, my administration will continue to invest in the subsector to steer its development. And over the next four years, we will institute measures aimed at enhancing performance and productivity of this subsector. This should increase aquaculture fish production from 8,944 metric tons, increase inland water fish production by 5,865 metric tons, and increase marine fish production by 11,000 metric tons. I urge county governments to adopt steps and aggressively encourage our people to take advantage and invest more in the fisheries subsector. This industry presents a real driver of growth and job creation in all our counties. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude my remarks, I want to once again reiterate that under the Big Four strategic plan, we have con committed to focus and to ensure that by 2022, our nation is food secure. We must conquer hunger, and we have to live true to what inspired our freedom fighters. I am happy to see that the interventions we have made are beginning to bear fruit. This year, the area under maize, our stable food, increased by 12%, and maize output rose from 34 million bags to 41 million bags. Indications are that we are most likely 
harvest 6 million bags of maize from the short rain season. And this brings expected total maize supply in 2018 to nearly 47 million bags. In addition, we have stocks amounting to some 9.8 million bags. So in 2018, we are talking of 56 million bags being available compared to our annual consumption of 52 million bags. That means that we shall have an excess of 4 million bags. In a rational environment, this should translate to significant reduction in the price of maize flour. And I therefore join Governor, Governor Sonko and want to be clear, since supply has risen, dealers should do the right thing to their fellow Kenyans and ease prices. I, I encourage our millers to be considerate and mindful of their social responsibility. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the task of building our nation, the task of transforming it to a better and prosperous nation where all Kenyans are happy requires commitment and partnership of the two levels of government and indeed of all Kenyans. And most importantly, those of us privileged and entrusted by our people with the noble responsibility of managing on their behalf our public resources, we must endeavor to exercise the highest degree of integrity. We must ensure that taxpayers' resources are only used to support programs that speak to their priority needs and nothing more. Working together and exercising highest degree of accountability and remaining true to the national interests, I remain optimistic that we will transform this nation to join the League of Truly Industrialized and Prosperous Nations sooner rather than later. Nani kimalizia, ningependa kusema tuki tukimoja kwa sababu sitaki kuongea sana. Umekuwa kilio pia kutoka wakulima wa mahindi ambao wanasema hawajalipwa. Nimeambiwa sasa na waziri ya kwamba kutoka leo wameanza kuwalipa wakulima wa mahindi ambao wamegojea kwa muda mrefu. Lakini Ningependa kusema hivi kwa sababu ukweli lazima usemwe. Pesa ya kulipa wakulima wa mahindi ilikuwa kwa bajeti yetu ya mwaka uliopita. Na tunajua haswa hawa watu wa National Serious Board badala ya kulima wa kulipa wakulima wale ambao wametoa jasho yao kwa mashamba yao ndio wapate mahindi wauze waweze kusomesha watoto wao walienda na wakaanza kulipa matajiri na wengine huko ma traders wakamaliza pesa kwa traders badala ya kulipia ule mkulima ambaye ametoa jasho i promise you and i swear before god you try that again and you'll see what is going to happen to you sisi hatutaki mchezo tena kwa sababu tumeona yale ambayo mmefanya Na wale ambao walifanya tutawafuata. Pesa ya serikali ni ya mwananchi. Kwanza lipa mwananchi yule ambaye ametoa jasho ya kulima shamba lake. Sitaki niongeze zaidi ya hapo, ni sema Mungu awabariki nyote na waalinde asanteni sana. Thank you, thank you your excellency. I now wish to most humbly invite you, your excellency sir to present live <coughs> Governor Burgess and long and loyal service awards to the awardees. Your Excellency, in line with Article 14 of the Agricultural Society of Kenya Constitution, the society has been permanent recognition to the following for distinguished and exceptional services rendered to the society. 
The first one is Professor Ntiba Micheni. Prepare Mr. Kennedy Akala Alunda. Your Excellency, in line with Article 15 of the Agricultural Society of Kenya Constitution, the following members who have been... Na mtazamaji ndio shughuli hiyo ambayo inaendelea hivi sasa.